Hi and welcome to our Carousel project video. In our community, we are building different projects together to improve our skills. Today I will show you how you can build your own carousel with sliding effect from scratch. You can fork our Git repository and try to build by yourself, but let's do it together. I need to clone our repo from GitHub. Next stop, I need to open my folder in my IDE. We also want to open index.html in my browser and you can see our template. Let's go back to our IDE and start to write our base HTML. I use Emmet plugin to write short syntax. So I need div with class carousel. Inside it, I need two buttons, which will be p tags. I want to have shared class now btn, btn left for left one and btn right for the right one. Hit tab and we have our base structure. Let me add some dummy arrows inside. So here you can see our structure. Great. Now we can write some base CSS. First, I need to remove my default CSS. Oh, and maybe link JS file to my index.html to finish our main setup. Don't forget to create this file. So I want to make my carousel 600 pixels wide and 400 pixels height. Margin top and bottom 200 pixels and left and right auto to put it horizontally to the center. I also add a background color to separate it visually. Position relative as we need to have some elements inside with position absolute and overflow hidden to hide all content that tries to get outside our box. And here we can see our box. Next step is to put our buttons in the right place. Both buttons should have position absolute. Top 0 to stick to the top, height 100%, width let's make it 40 pixels, random background, font color black, margin 0, as by default p tags has margins. Text align center, as we want to align our arrows horizontally, and set line height to the height of our carousel, to align arrows vertically. We also need a z index to put our buttons in front of our images and change cursor to pointer. Looks good. The only thing I want to add is to put the left button to the left and right one to the right. For this reason, I'm using our extra class btn left and left zero and btn right with right zero. Brilliant! Now we can move to our logic. To get our images, I need to fetch them from some API, as I don't have it locally. I'm using Unsplash API to do that. It's free, so you can also use it. We need to save our API key, what we get shortly, into a separate file, as it is unique for every user, and you don't want to share it with others. So I'm going to Unsplash, navigate to Your Apps, Click New Application, set a name and description. And now, if you scroll down, you can find an API key that you need to copy and paste to your API file. Now we can go to Documentation and open a List Photos tab and use Hot Linking Link. Scroll a bit down and you can find the structure of URL that you need to use. I'm copying this URL and paste it into my code. I need to adjust it as I want to use my API key. So I use interpolation syntax to concatenate my string with a variable 
Remember that you need to have backticks, not quotes. So you need to copy your API key and assign it to our API key variable. Now I want to link my API file to index.html so we get access to it from index.js. In my index.js file, I want to create a function which fetches me my images from the API. I call it getImages and it should take a parameter, which is our constructed URL. In the body of our function, we want to return a fetch request to our URL. We catch a response with then, converts it to object, and then take our object and assign it to our global variable. So let's create a global variable. I call it images. Also, I'm updating my variable by mapping my object that I just got as a response. Let's console log what we've got. Now I want to call my function with URL as a parameter so we can see the result. Go back to our browser, refresh the page and here we have our array with images. It is an array of objects. Every image has a lot of different properties, but we need only URL to file. Next step is to create an event listener for our buttons. To do that, I need to create a variable which I want to assign to my carousel element. So now I can apply an event listener to our element. I want to listen for clicks. Our carousel L is a kind of scope for listening. So if I click inside carousel on any element and our target has class btn left, I want to console log left. If it has class btn right, I want to console log right. Nice, it works. So here I want to trigger click handler function, which I need to declare with parameter minus one if it is left and one if it's right. Also convert to ternary our ifs statements. To change our image, we need to have a counter which we use as an index. By default, it should be zero. So if our parameter equals one, we want to increase our counter. However, in this case, we also want to check does our counter less than quantity of our images minus one. If yes, increment our counter. We use minus one as a raise start from zero. Otherwise, we are at the end of our array. In that case, we want to set counter to zero and show the first image from our array. Let me convert it to ternary. Now it looks better. If move two is minus one and counter more than zero, I want to decrement our counter. But if our counter is zero, I want to set the last index of our array, which equals to array length minus one. Also, after that, I want to call a function which will create me an image element with a particular image. I named it create image L. So now I need to declare it. This function expects a parameter with our image. Inside my function, first, what I want to do is to create a new div element, which is a wrapper for my image. I want to add a class image wrapper so we can use it for styling. Next stop is to create an image element and add a class image. So here I want to set a source attribute to URL from our image object. It is an image.urls.full. We can check it in our console.
So now we want to append our image to our image wrapper. And append our image wrapper to carousel element that we already have on our page. Let's refresh a page and we can see our image after I navigate to any direction as we trigger our render function only on click. After I click next, we can't see the next image, but as you can see, we've added it to the dome. To fix it, we need to add some styles. So I want to set position for my image wrapper to absolute. Top 0, left 0, to align it to the top left corner. Height and width 100% to cover our carousel. Also overflow hidden, so our image couldn't get outside. So now if we click next for a few times, we can see different images. Let's use a regular size for our images so we can load them quicker. So we can change images, but the problem is that we are creating new elements and may have a huge stack of it. However, first I want to adjust our image size as it's still too big. So I want to set position absolute, top 50%, left 50%, and you can see that our image is 50% from the top and 50% from the left. Now I want to use property transform and translate my image to minus 50% on X coordinate and minus 50% on Y coordinate. In this case, 50% takes based on image height and width. Also, let's set width to 100%. Awesome, it looks nice. Actually, we need to render the first image on initial load. So inside my then callback that I have for fetching data, I render an initial image. All I need to do is call our create image L function with a parameter. So now you can see that if we reload our page, we can see an image. However, we still have all these images in my carousel. All I want to do is to remove the previous image after I get a new one. So before I'm creating a new image wrapper, I want to catch the current one. To do that, I'm declaring current active images and select my image wrapper. It also needs to have a class image active, which I can toggle later. So now, if we have current active images, I want to remove all previous images. I do it with separate function. I call it remove prev images with our current images as a parameter. Theoretically, we have only one current image at the time, but to protect yourself from potential bugs, I use query selector all. So in my remove prev images function, I use for each to do that. If we go to our browser, you can see that now we have only one image in our carousel container. Let's add our image active class to the new slide that we are creating. So here you can see that we have our class. To implement our slide effect, we need to know a direction. That is why I want to receive direction as a parameter. It should be our move to value. So now I can have a condition. If direction equals to one, my image class should be image right as we move right. Also, if direction equals to minus one, image class should be image left. So we know from what direction we should slide in our new slide. Let's create some CSS for our transition. So for our image wrapper, which also has class image left, I want to put it on left and slide to the right. That is why I use transform translate minus 100% and zero. The same we want for image right, but the value for transform should be translate 100% and zero. Moreover, now for our image wrapper, we want to have transition 
half a second. Also, if our image wrapper has class image active, it shouldn't be transformed. We haven't removed our image left and image right, so we need to keep them as a part of our selectors. The next thing is that we want to have some timeout before we toggle new classes. For that, I'm creating set timeout, and if I have some active images, I want to call add slide effect function, which I create shortly with parameters. The first parameter is our current active slides, and the second is our class that we want to toggle. I'm creating my add slide effect function, pass our parameters, and inside our function, I want to use for each to remove image active and image class classes from all our previous images. So for our new image wrapper, I want to add class image active as it is our new active image. And of course, we need a timer. Let's set it to 100 milliseconds. Now we can see that new images have a nice slide effect. The last thing that we want to implement is to slide out our previous image, not just disappear. To do that, we need to declare one more variable, which should be opposite img class. And now, if image class is image right, our opposite image class should be image left, else image right. Now we want to pass this variable as a parameter to our add slide effect function. So there, we want to add our opposite class to our old slides. We also need to add timeout before we remove old images. To do that, I need to move my remove prev images inside timeout and set timeout value to one second. And here, I want to remove my image right and image left classes from my new image wrapper. Go back to our browser and Hmm, we can see a bug. Our previous image moves in the wrong direction. Oh, this is because our ternary doesn't work, as we used the wrong class for the condition. It should be image right, not img right. Go back to our browser. And yes, finally it works as we expected. Don't forget to push your code to GitHub. I think that was awesome. Leave a comment and tell us what else you want to build. Let's do it together. Hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe to our channel, join our Gitter, and follow us on Twitter. See you in the next videos.